If you're curious how to ensure your course materials are accessible, we're going to take a few minutes and do just exactly that. We're going to take a look at Section 508. What is Section 508? What is accessibility? We'll take a look at Microsoft products and how to ensure they're accessible. We'll also discuss videos and best practices for videos, and then we'll have a short conclusion. So Section 508 of the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 basically ensures that disabled employees and members of the general public are given equal access to information that is given to others. So let's start with Microsoft Office products and ensuring that they are accessible. And again, what is accessibility? It means that the general public should be able to consume information at the same rate and the same capacity that someone with a disability can do. And so we're going to start with Microsoft Office. Chances are you have already built several Microsoft uh, Word documents before. We want to make sure that those Word documents are accessible. And most of the time they're going to be because most of the time they're going to be text heavy. However, there's some things that we can do to help people with screen readers. First of all, we can use the headings setting rather than just using larger font sizes or bold typing headings. We want to use heading one, heading two for those subheadings, etc. all the way down to heading three, four. And we use paragraph format or normal text or regular uh, text within the document. What we're going to do next is go ahead and check our accessibility. And so we click on review, check accessibility, and now we get some accessibility warnings. We get intelligence services, and it shows that we have uh, a picture here, and it will generate captions for us or alt text for us. And we want to make sure that it is correct and what we want it to be. So we're going to right click on it, and we're going to check what the alt text says. And it notices that there is a grid. It doesn't really know what the grid is all about, but it says there's a grid and there is black text as well. This is obviously not going to help somebody with a disability uh, that is using a screen reader. And so this image is not going to be conducive to accessibility or compliant with Section 508. As an instructor, this is just not good practice uh, to use in your courses. So we want to uh, reconsider in this particular image and we want to make a table within our Word document and reconstruct what is inside of this uh, particular image or we can construct a PDF document so that it is screen reader accessible. We're going to go ahead and pretend that it's fine so we click decorative image for now. Next thing I want to do here is consider our text color. Uh, right now we're using dark mode so this dark blue against black is not going to really be very good if I only have a visual impairment. I don't have a screen reader, I don't need a screen reader normally, but I have a visual impairment or I'm colorblind, this might not help me um, having such a, a low contrast and color. However, it's not going to check it right now in checking for accessibility because it is assuming that I'm going to normally have a white background. And so that's just something to consider is whatever mode you're in, you want to make sure that uh, you are considering that as well. It's assuming that I have a white background and I have blue text and so it's going to come up as okay. Next thing I want to look at here is my table. My table didn't come up as flawed because a screen reader is able to follow along. If I put, click in the first uh, column there and push tab, the screen reader would read it from left to right and then top to bottom. Now you'll notice if you use Canvas or similar learning management systems and you try to build a table within those, it will tell you that you need a table heading and alt text for those tables, but Microsoft uh, Word documents do not need that. So next up, we're going to take a look at Microsoft PowerPoint, Slide Decks. Same thing, I'm going to click on Review, and I'm going to click on Check Accessibility. When I check Accessibility, it gives me errors. Errors are the things that I absolutely need to fix. Warnings are the things that I need to double check and make sure that they're going to be okay. So the first thing it tells me is that I need a slide title. A screen reader won't know where to start. And so I'm going to follow the directions it gives me down at the bottom. I'm going to begin writing in my slide title. You'll notice up above highlighted is the accessibility tab. And it tells me at the bottom what I need to do. I need to both click on slide title. Now it's going to designate that as a slide title. I can also click on the drop down and edit the slide title. But now I've got a slide title and so you'll notice that my error went away. I'm going to check on the warnings now. First thing that it flags here is that I've got a table built, but I have merged columns within that table. So when I take a look at my table, 
This is not really going to be a problem because I am using the merged columns under the top uh, row. And so I'm basically making it a pseudo uh, title. However, if I was merging columns down below or, or merging sections down below within a larger table, the screen reader is going to get confused potentially. And so the uh, person that is using the screen reader may also get confused in the data. So we want to be cognizant of that. Set up like this, it is still going to flag as a warning wanting you to check for the merged uh, tiles there. So here in Refine, again, we're going to click on the first tile and then we're going to click tab tab and it reads just like I would want the screen reader to read it. Next up, we're gonna check intelligence services. This is again where it is gonna auto generate some text for an image. We've embedded an image here into our slide deck. This image is of a flow chart. However, when we go to check alt text and we do that by right clicking and on the image and then viewing alt text, it tells us that it's a picture containing text, a screenshot, font, line. This is obviously not going to tell our reader uh, anything if they've got a visual impairment. So this is not going to be accessible at all and it is not compliant with Section 508. Now if it was uh, something that could be easily described, I could retype the text so that it would be easier. Um, however, in this particular image, it is not appropriate to write there's a flowchart and then write each of the things in the flowchart. What I'd want to do is reconstruct the flowchart as a graphic inside of the slide deck, or I would want to um, build some kind of a table that would show that there's a, a flow or a pattern here in, in this particular case. Um, so what we're going to do then is go ahead and uh, assume that it is fine that this particular image was reconstructed or it was, it was accessible. I'm going to double check my uh, review and check accessibility. You'll notice that the orange check mark for keep accessibility checker running in the background while I work. Live updated everything. Uh, but it's always, I like to personally, it's a personal thing, double check my accessibility one more time. Next, we're going to look at Excel spreadsheets. This works the very same way. Here's my mock spreadsheet here. I'm going to finish typing in my data. That looks fine. I'm going to go ahead and click on review and then check accessibility just like in the other two examples. Warnings. So again, errors are the biggies we must fix. Warnings. Let's double check and make sure that they are accessible. In this case, it says A1 to C1 on sheet one are not going to be appropriate because it's hard to read text contrast. And down below, you'll see that it shows me that I can have some steps to fix. And I'm going to follow those steps. They're already highlighted for me. The tiles are already highlighted for me. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on home and then I'm going to change the font color so that it will be a, a larger contrast and easier for someone with a visual impairment to read it. So click on home, change the color, I'll just change it to white and now you'll see that the keep accessibility checker running was still running and so it is live updated. I have no problems now with my Excel spreadsheet. And so that's going to take us to videos. Uh, YouTube is the most common, some people use Kaltura, whatever video you use couple of things here. We want to make sure closed captions are highlighted white so that they are going to play and they should be at least 85% generated correctly. Both YouTube and Kaltura allow you to edit captions to ensure their accuracy. Now we want to make sure that our videos do not display numeric data or some kind of chart or artistic data that otherwise is not being thoroughly explained in the video or transcript since we are looking to ensure that the video and all of its content is accessible to our learners. So if the numbers are important, they need to be spoken or they need to be in the transcript for our learners. If you have found this video helpful, consider following so that we can continue to build our arsenal. And in the comments, please be sure to share your best practices so we can continue to learn from each other. Thanks for watching.